Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast, powered by NetAlly, the show for IT professionals and managed service providers, where we help you run your business better, smarter, and faster. And today we are doing a very special presentation. Even though this is released as an audio podcast, there is an accompanying video that you'll be able to see. So if you head over to the website, the show notes, at itbusinesspodcast.com, click on video. You'll be able to follow along with us and watch what we're doing because we may do a little screen share here. And when I say we, I'm joined by Kevin Lancaster and Matt Solomon from the channel program. Guys, how are you? Doing great. How are you? <laughs> doing, <good. laughs> doing amazing. Are you laughing that we were waiting for who was going to yeah, speak first? Then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I was I was focused on the fact that I clearly need to take a selfie with you at an event so I can get into the intro of the show. Uh, that, yeah, is true. True. that is true. Impressive. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, uh, you guys have introduced uh, something called My IT Spend, and I see that as a, a client management tool uh, designed to help MSPs optimize their client relationship and boost revenue. So, of course, a lot of questions come along with that, but why don't we start with first one of you telling us what that is and why you came up with it. I'll take a stab at that. Um, so, first, thing, again, thanks for having us on the, uh, the show again. Appreciate it. Um, so, the idea behind my IT spend I grew out of the fact that I've scaled an MSP. Uh, I've also been on the other side of the of the table as a vendor, you know, scaling ID agent and then running go to market globally at Kaseya. And as we looked at, you know, how can we start to solve big problems in this industry and, and just make things more efficient? This is one of the areas that we, we chose. So we started with the Navistack concept where you come in and start to vi just, just basically visualize your stack and figure out the gaps. And that opens portals to vendors that are in the platform and, you know, it's, it's, it's creating a lot of, you know, really streamlining a lot of the interaction between the, the vendor and the MSP. Uh, but that next big challenge was how do we help MSPs differentiate, grow revenue in a marketplace that's getting increasingly crowded where there is stack parity? And that's what a lot of the data that we see is, the, you know, a lot of these stacks are the same and MSPs are having a hard time differentiate. So how could we build something that, allow the MSP to go into a customer or a prospect uh, and say, all right, look, I, you know, I'm going to manage your network. I'm going to manage your email. I'm going to keep you secure. I'm going to run the backup. Um, but yeah, every other MSP in this marketplace is going to say the same thing. So I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to work with you on your entire technology spend, not just your, you know, not just this core MSP services. We want to get in there and we want to understand what are you spending on connectivity? What are you, you know, what are you spending on project management tools? What are you spending on your your HubSpot platform? Right? We want to make sure that we provide, you know, we get you know much greater visibility as the dog barks in the background. As apologies for that. Yeah. But um, sorry, go ahead, take it. So sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so I mean you know, Kevin was talking about the differentiation and Kevin, I guess when your dog stops barking, you can feel free to join back. But yeah, I was looking at, at opportunities to, for an MSP to get greater visibility into all of the different technologies, one that they're spending on internally. So managing their own contracts and subscriptions. And then on the flip side, our early adopters of the internal license said to us, hey, we'd love to provide this to our customers because you know there's a tons of, of subscriptions and things that they're signing up for that we're not actually fully aware of uh, we want to have these conversations and kind of our vcio type of uh, services and or quarterly business reviews 
And so it's it's maturing the conversation that an MSPs uh, can have with one of their customers. You know, there's unlocking shadow IT again. Th there's areas that they don't even know that uh, one of their customers is spending money on, and it could be right in, in that sense. It could be a revenue opportunity because they may uncover that a client of theirs is going directly to you know vendor X Y Z when they could you know be purchasing it through them uh, at a discount at a, at a lesser rate. Sorry, so let me let me let me step back and see if I heard this correctly because part of me heard that this was something for the the MSP to look at their own spending across their stack, but you now adopted this so that we can take it to our customers and use it to show what they're spending. So was that the initial intent was to do both, or did it just start out for MSPs and we're shifting it into that VCIO area? So the initial intent was to, and again, apologies, uh, it's nothing uh, like a dog barking on a live broadcast, but um, so the initial intent was really focused around helping the MSP start to mature their operations, right? We looked across the board, again, I, you know, my, my personal example, right, as I was scaling, you know, our uh, organization in DC, we had 75, 76 different vendors that we were working with, and you know, we were managing everything in Excel. And I, I feel pretty confident in saying that 95% of your, you know, your audience is doing the same thing. They're managing the brand relationships in Excel and they're doing it very poorly. Uh, and that's, you know, obviously one of the big things that you see out on Reddit is, is complaints about contracts and missed renewals and I'm stuck into this. And so, so that was the first, first stab, right? Help, let's help the MSP get a grasp on what their stack is, help them understand where the gaps are then start helping them understand what their expenses are, uh, help them figure out uh, when their contracts are coming up for renewal, when they have to you know, flag it uh, for the notice period, because that's one of the big issues, right? You know, you've got all these vendor agreements, not managing them effectively. They didn't realize you had a 60 day notice uh, you know, period on your RMM and you missed it and you know, you got renewed. Now, if you're, if you're migrating away from RMMs, God bless you, but um, you get to kind of get the point, right? But so we started with the idea of really helping the, the MSP. And, and as they started to use the tool, they're like, how do we use this for our customers, right? How do we get our customer, not only how do we get our customer data in here, but how do we basically co-manage this with our customers? Um, and so I think the trick in all this is that you know, and, and I can say this because I've been in the industry for the last 20 years, most MSPs are just operationally immature, right? They're not managing their stack, their vendors, their expenses properly. So the hard part was getting them to really understand this. Once they had that aha moment, they said, shoot, I need to take this to my customer because again, I can see, you know, I can see what I'm providing the customer, but there's all these blind spots that you have now a lot of trusted advisors that are coming into the MSP marketplace because they're looking for that recurring revenue model, but they're getting their foot in the door by selling connectivity, right? By selling one-off or selling hardware, right? And that creates a blind spot for the MSPs. And so, so a lot of the feedback that we got early on is that how do we use this to help better support our customers? So understand what we're providing each customers, what the gaps might be at each customer so we can upsell them. Uh, but then how do we make this a team sport and see more broadly what they're spending money on? And there've been some really amazing you know, byproducts of this. We've had one uh, MSP that, you know, they've got something like 12 or 13 of their customers are using HubSpot. They didn't know that. They're HubSpot certified. Now they're moving all the HubSpot licensing underneath of their, you know, their certification, right? So that's the one, you know, it's kind of maybe off to the side or off to the, you know, left to center as far as a, a, a new revenue opportunity. But and we're seeing uh, quite a few of these um, really interesting additive revenue opportunities. And then similarly, it's showing them what the gaps are, what are the other things that they could potentially sell uh, to these customers. So there's there's quite a few things that we're trying to tackle with this. But again, the first thing was just get the MSPs to a point where they're mature enough, and then they can start talking about this and, and really differentiate. Because going back to that, you know, what I started off with, the stacks, stacks are stacks, right? And 90% of what an MSP says down the street is probably copied and pasted from your from your website. Everybody sounds the same. And so if an MSP's got the ability to go in and say, yeah, you know, we are different, right? We're gonna help you manage your entire technology spend. We're gonna help you see, 
you know, around the corner with all of your expense and your renewals uh, and help you become more efficient as a business. That's where this marketplace is going because the ones that are not doing that, they're going to get stuck in this vortex of margin erosion. And you're seeing that with a lot of the platforms coming out with bundled pricing, you know, pushing margins down. The barrier of entry in this marketplace is, is ridiculously low now. And if you're not differentiating, moving your services upstream, you know, then you're going to be, you're going to have a tough time moving forward. Yeah. Sorry. I'm getting so, fired up. That's all right. <laughs> so <laughs> a couple of questions that I had based on that is because I'm looking at my own business and I'm like, okay, I'm doing that. I've got, you know, all of my customer licensing, you know, in my documentation product, I've asked them, you know, what are you spending in other areas that we need to keep track on, you know, whether it's their internet, their phones, all of that stuff. I have a quote unquote life cycle management product that I'm using to capture those contracts. Um, so it sounds like this is another tool that is what consolidating all of those into, into one thing. Yeah, well, first, congratulations, because you are in rarefied air relative to, to most MSPs. Again, wow. we've spent a lot of time studying this, you know, this challenge. And there are folks that are using some lifecycle tools. There are some folks that are are trying to, you know, hijack some of their documentation or even trying to put some of the stuff in the in the PSAs, which don't get me started on that. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think this part of this is is partly is to consolidate it and then turn this into a team sport, right? You know, if you have that buy-in from your customer, if they can see what their expense is, you can co-manage that with them. That's where this is. That's where this is going. That's building a relationship with your customer. Um, when you're going in and having that QBR, they have the visibility. You have something to say. Look, you know, we're looking in in the stack. You guys haven't updated. You know, you guys haven't held your end of the bargain, right? You guys haven't updated. You know, your licensing. You haven't. You know, it, it gives you another talking point to really come in as the authority. Uh, and help them get their business uh, organized. And that's that's a, a lot of the early feedback from the early adopters is that it's it's changing the conversation. It's, it's turning it into a proactive conversation where, you know, most MSPs, um, they go in and they have their QBR. It might be a, you know, quick checklist or might even just be a quick, you know, phone call check-in um, if they're lucky quarterly. But this gives you a reason to sit down with them uh, and and have more of a meaningful conversation and find these additional opportunities that are out there. Yeah, it, and it's it's also you know built around an entire ecosystem designed for MSPs to manage you know their vendors and and research vendors. Right, we've got over five thousand product reviews in the platform, so it's that's that in itself makes it just a unique thing. Is that the entire ecosystem that's built around my IT spend is all related to the MSPs and the technologies that they're integrating with and, and purchasing and partnering with. And then the other piece that Kevin didn't really get into, you know, he was talking about rolling it out to the, to the MSPs customers, but there's actually a lead generation opportunity within this as well. And it comes down to keeping things simple and how we simplify licensing. And we did the exact same thing at ID agent. We simplified licensing to make, the MSP's lives easier. And so what we've done is we've come out with a flat rate and at least for our early adopters, we're allowing unlimited licensing. And so by allowing unlimited licensing, it opens up the door to way beyond just your customers. So now you can actually offer this type of service to prospects. And, you know, one of the examples that we've given is, you know, doing a, a webinar on, you know, maturing to small business prospects, you know, we're doing this webinar on maturing your business operations as a small business. And for attending the event, kind of the hook would be, we're also gonna give you a, a free one-year license to start managing all your subscriptions and contracts. And, you know, imagine, I like to say, imagine a world where a prospect basically gives out their, you know, their, they put in their, 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 their IT spend, and you now as the MSP have visibility into a prospect's IT spend. So, I mean, I mean, Kevin can give different examples, but the, to me, the possibilities are endless when it comes to the lead gen side of it as well. All right. So first thing, I guess we need to make sure the listeners and the viewers understand. So this is something that is going to be a subscription that mm -hmm. it's, it's not, you know, free, like, you know, some other pieces that you guys have over at the channel right. program. Uh, the license is for the MSP and for a limited time, 
we can use it for our unlimited number of customers. I assume that will stop at some point. No. So you'll have the, the early adopters will have it for life. That's okay. That's the message. Kevin, you can keep me honest about that, but that's, that's what you've said too. So, so yeah. that, that unlimited licensing model is, you know, for the early adopters, we're not going to take that away from them. All right. No, and, and there will be a link in the show notes. And of course you can just do a search, uh, channel program, my it spend. So we'll have that in there and you can go and book your demo and transform your client management. All right. Yeah, so we've talked about, I'm, I'm sorry, Kevin, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. I, I was going to say, so we've talked about this, you know, gaining insight in the customers. We've talked about the ability to track everything, uh, have that possibly turn into lead generation. You know, if they are use, using other products that we didn't know about and stuff, uh, converting them into our platform, managing contracts. So now the idea of, you know, how do we track that? Is there a way to see what that ROI is, you know, by using the product? Yeah, you can certainly see. In fact, we were just, I was just on a, a call with, with uh, a customer just before this, uh, for this uh, podcast, but um, you see ROI in, in a couple of different ways. You see it in, in the improved operational efficiency, right? You see it in, you know, hey, we're we're not missing our contract renewals, and I did not get renewed for another twenty or thirty thousand dollars, right, on this specific subscription. Again, we've got a whole bunch of just even the in the last couple of months that the the core product's been out, we're seeing we've probably seen that that scenario or or that complement maybe a dozen, two dozen times. Um, so I, I think there's there's op, very direct operational efficiency. You know, once you get it up and running and you're managing it proactively, um, you're getting the reminders. I mean, that that creates that level of efficiency. Um, on the um, on the ROI on the the tool itself, when you're using it as a prospect, as Matt mentioned, we don't care if you send it out to one or ten thousand prospects, right? We don't care if you use it for one or or you know two hundred customers. We've got an ROI calculator uh, up on the site that you can. You can start at nine, you know, maybe you're offering it for $9 a month, right? As a standalone subscription, or maybe you're, you're providing this as part of a technology spend management service at $2.99 a month or $4.99, depending on the size of the customer. So, so the ROI is, I think is, can be pretty significant, both sides. It's the operational efficiency. It's the cost savings. Uh, it's kind of the peace of mind, right? Knowing that you you're on top of your, your stack. Uh, but then it's also the revenue opportunities on, on the other side of the house are are really unlimited um so we well and i'd say one of the things that's exciting about it uh marv is that most small businesses and mid-sized organizations suck at managing their contracts and subscriptions so you, you're like you're hitting such a major pain point that everybody has by the way not even just as business owners we all suck at this on personal levels so it's a pain point that everybody can understand who hasn't had in either personal life or in their work life a renewal come up and they missed it and it's as a small business you know i, I mean look we probably all have examples i guarantee Mar marv you have an example for yourself but you know, yeah, I MSP. forgot to uh, I forgot to change my Hulu subscription the other day. So <laughs> exactly, but like at an MSP, there you, you go. know, um, they had Zoom Info, ten thousand dollar contract that renewed that they did not want to renew, and that's just that's like such a gut punch. And you know, we're we're talking like a, about a ninety nine dollar product here. We're not talking about like you know, like I don't know how any MSP can not afford to to be doing this at this point. Um, and, and, and again, the opportunity because all their customers and all the prospects out there are not good at this either. Right. So let me ask this because we, we've talked about what the product is and now the idea in my head, I'm trying to think, okay, how does this look? Is this something that, you know, is it a multi-tenant dashboard? Is it something that I have to do for each client individually? And, you know, obviously you know, I can sign up to book my demo, but, you know, can you show a little bit of what it actually looks like to give us an idea since we're, we're on video? Can we yeah. do that? No, I'm happy to do that. Um, and Marv, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll start with Navistat because just that's where it started. And I think okay. I just think for the evolution of where the product's gone, I think it's, it's good, good to show people. Um, right. Are you able to see my screen? We can see it. All right. So again, this is the Navistack tool that Kevin initially talked about. It's where we started. Um, and this is this 
component as actually free to the MSP. It allows you to visualize your technology stack. So all the different vendors you're working with, you're able to you know, add them in here. You can start identifying gaps in your stack, um, potentially overlap. You know, Maybe you have a, multiple vendors offering o O365 uh, backup. And it really, you know, I, I, there's no other place where you can go where you're like, gosh, I really need vulnerability assessment. I just don't even know who offers that. And the accessibility that this tool gives you, um, you can actually simply click into a product category and you'll see the different offerings that are given throughout the industry. And what's neat about it is you can then go farther and research all of these companies and see what other MSPs are saying. Like I mentioned, we have over 5,000 product reviews in the platform. And then what it also starts to unlock is this customized experience. So here on the right-hand side, this is a customized widget based on upcoming events from your product stack. So these are the, you know, these are the vendors you're paying a lot of money to and a lot of time. You know, you need to stay on top of, of their of their thought leadership or their product updates. So it's really important to be able to have that bird's eye view into the upcoming events. The other piece, and this is a major pain point for a lot of MSPs, I talk to thousands probably per year, is that every time a, an MSP signs up with a vendor, the vendor expects that MSP to log into their partner portal for their enablement materials. And what we've done is we've gone outside to the vendor community and say, why make it so difficult? Why not put it all in one place? And so that's what we've you know, been one of our, our core missions is getting all of these vendors to put their materials to make it simply easier for the MSPs to get those enablement materials. So we're talking white labeled documents, you know, training videos and whatnot, and they can actually communicate with all the different vendors in one place. So having that, you know, that chat functionality, so I can reach out to Jeremy Young at Blue Mare right away if I have a problem. Um, so, you know, again, it's just that consolidation of all of these different things from different places into one place finally for the MSP. So everything Marv I just showed you has been completely free and remains to be remains completely free to the MSPs. The evolution that we talked about with my IT spend, that's when we start getting into the contract and vendor subscription management. So it's, you know, looking at obviously, you know, your total monthly costs and and, and annual costs, it, you know, having these upcoming renewal reminders just easily accessible to you. Um, you can kind of, I'll scroll down here. I'll show you examples of, you know, these are obviously fake licensing, but you know, giving you that bird's eye view of every license that you're signing up for. And by the way, it's not just about the vendors you're seeing at uh, a Datocon. It's, it's all the ancillary subscriptions. It's the Zooms, it's the, you know, Canva licensing, all that stuff adds up. And so, you know, you don't want to continue paying these subscriptions if it doesn't make sense, or maybe you have duplicate uh, type of offerings that you didn't even realize that you're paying for. So it really starts uncovering it. But in its simplest form, this is really about never missing a renewal date ever again. And Kevin alluded to this, it's not about the expiration date of the contract, as many of you know. It is about the renewal notification date. That is the key date that you need to be aware of and set up reminders so that if you have to give 60 days notice, you probably need a reminder 60 days before that because you need to evaluate whether it's going to be something you renew. You don't want to have to be making these decisions on the last day of notification. So that's where this is the internal licensing. And then, Marv, you did ask about you know what, what the view looks like if you're offering it to the customers. And that's the next evolution of it, which is offering it to your customers and having that, that multi-tenant view. Um, so, you know, third gate hotel, you know, this is an example of, of all my customers who, you know, are, are filled out their, um, their contract subscriptions. Again, this is, this is my view. So one, I'd be able to, and this is a MSP only view. This part of it is based on the stack I have of offerings. I'm able to identify what they currently have in, in, in my stack within theirs. So again, I, I being able to identify and I'll, and I'll show you exactly how this will work. Uh, but it'll let me know, okay, for some reason, they don't have my MFA product that I'm offering. So you start to identify, you know, areas that they uh, are not being invested in uh, from the um, the tools. The other piece is the contract management. Now, it's the same view. Now, the difference is this would be co-managed. So the customer would have this view only. 
but you would now have that same view. So you will be able to see all the contracts, the subscriptions, the renewal dates, the price points. Uh, so you would have that bird's eye view into every one of your customers that's filled out this information. And right. let me, yep. let me ask you a quick question in terms of how the information gets in there. Is this something mm -hmm. that we can pull through API integration with our existing products, or is this something that either we or the customer has to go in and put manually that information in the dashboard? Yeah. Well, so oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. I mean, so you, most vendors don't let you pull in their contract start date and end date terms from an API. They'll let you pull customer licensing counts and and uh, maybe some cost information. So the core of it is that you have to at least put the contract in here. Uh, we've got integrations forthcoming with ConnectWise and all the PSAs, um, who, by the way, they do, as, again, one of the jumping off points here is that the PSAs just do such a horrible job, you know, and I love them all, don't get me wrong, but they do a horrible job of helping you visualize this stuff with your customers, especially some of the legacy PSAs that are out there. You know who right. I'm talking about. Uh, but um, yeah, so I, I think... The core of this is, is that vendors aren't that they're not necessarily, and this is a line that we have to walk, right? Vendors aren't going to necessarily say, "Hey, here's an API to let you know when to cancel my contract," right? right. Um, so, so at the highest level, putting in the vendor information, you know, that's still you can pull that stuff out of your PSA, um, you know, and and you can upload it. And again, we've got these APIs uh, uh, firing uh, here shortly, but um, you know, the next part of this was, yeah, we want to help automate some of that license count downstream uh for customers uh and so you get even you know better yeah. visibility yeah. but okay first well, and, and, contracts in there yeah and, and and not just automate through potentially the the integrations that that kevin alluded to but i think in two weeks we're unleashing um upload uh, the ability to upload through an excel spreadsheet so as we said all a lot of these msps already have this stuff in excel and they'll with basically a click of a button be able to upload these contracts um, information into this through an Excel upload. It also knows based on your stack that you've put together, you know, who you at least have some level of contracts with. So it does make it very intuitive to add. And then as your customers continue to add the data, I'm kind of going back to the, the Navistack screen here. Um, I'll switch it over to the list view. You'll actually be able to see on your own Navistack um, if it will go here. Yep. Um, so, right. So I can see that, you know, Kaseya VSA is only in one of my 11 clients right now. So you start oh, to okay. see that, that opportunity that you can unlock, uh, with this knowledge. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if you let me real quick, um, I think one of the really interesting things, and we didn't necessarily touch on this, um, is that. Again, part of this is is maturing MSPs operationally, and then getting you know more integrated with their customer and, and finding revenue opportunities. But one of the, the really interesting things uh, that we've done here lately, we've done a series of M and A roadshows, right? Uh, and the rationale behind that is that you think of some of the monolith type of MSPs, the large MSPs, like the Logically's and the Antivas and the the Thrives. Um, you know, Thrive's case in particular, right? They've acquired what 21, 22 different MSPs. And you imagine uh, from a from a you know you're looking down and saying, all right, I've got 21 MSPs that have acquired that have 21 different stacks with licensing that licensing that's all over the place. Um, so part of what we built into this as well is the ability to you know manage you know other MSPs within there. Maybe you're acquiring, but maybe you've already acquired them and you want to see their stacks. Right, because you want to start to normalize your licensing, and you know, and and I've got you know nine ID agent licenses at you know nine different price points, right? And I've got to you know put those contracts in alignment, so that has the, the ability to do that um, with this with this tool as well. And so again, that goes back to you know these MSPs are looking to be acquired. One of the first things that you do in due diligence is all right. Let's understand your expenses. Let's look at your stack. Um, so I think this could have a material impact on MSP's ability to be prepared for those conversations if they're looking for investment or to be acquired as well. So I kind of want to touch on that for a second. All right. So all that looks pretty yeah. nice. Pretty nice. Um, of course, the question is going to be, 
you, I don't know if you slipped when you said 99 bucks, Matt, but that sounds like a low price. Is it going to go up? Uh, so that's so that's for the internal. Okay. Um, and we do offer discounts for upfront annual commitments. Um, so you could actually get it down to as low as 79. And the license for the customers, so to, to be able to roll it out to your customers and your prospects. Gavin, do, I know we, what, what price point are we at today? I think we're at 249, 249. Uh, yep. a month right now. And then if they do an annual agreement, I think it's down to 199 a month. So we want to, you know, we're sensitive to pricing, right? Because obviously we understand the stacks and pricing and layering in. Um, but yeah, we want to make this just, you know, ridiculously affordable for MSPs. Uh, they want to get into the M&A and kind of the roll up uh, capabilities with the multi stack manager. Uh, I think that's uh, at 4.99 right now. So, and these aren't these aren't break the bank uh, type of uh, you know prices. You know, this shouldn't be a barrier. Be getting your house in order should be, you know, it shouldn't should be an arm and a leg. And that's the way we've we've structured the pricing this way. All right. So I want to go back and just ask this question: um, the idea of coming up with this, obviously. I'm assuming presented by some MSPs. Uh, did they uh, identify with you some of the challenges beyond contract management and revenue management and things like that? Because this does look like a tool that is, is TBR based, I guess, to some degree, or like I mentioned earlier, VCIO based. Uh, but is there still a challenge with getting customers to give us that information and what we can do with it? I think the challenge, well, I think, yeah, anytime you're dealing with, you know, human behavior and getting them to do things, there's always a challenge, right? And that's, you know, see that challenge directly with MSPs, just getting, you know, their own own house in order. But to me, it always comes down to, you know, the positioning and having a conversation. In fact, we, we saw that same, surprisingly, right? We saw the same challenge with, with ID agents, dark web ID, right? We had MSP saying, all right, here's my customer's password. How do I have a conversation with them? We're like, go show them that fact that their password's out there 19 times, and this is why they need all the technology and all the security that you've been trying to sell them for the last three or four years, right? So fundamentally- yeah, that, that, I think was a little different because customers are like, oh, you hacked my password. You know, what's to, what's, how do we know that you didn't just go out and find that and do that? Whereas this is a little different because it's, it can be looked at, look, if you let us know what you're doing, we can probably help save you money. We can help you, you know, cancel contracts that, you know, you don't want those subscriptions out there, but then they're going to turn around and say, well, but you're going to want us to spend more money with you. Um, of course, I'm, my answer to that's always, well, of course, you know, mm. so. But I, but I think it's also not just about the, you know, obviously, yeah, it's the MSP is getting incredible data, but at the end of the day, the, the customer is getting a tool to manage their own, even if the MSP sold them no additional services, they are now being able to manage all of their subscriptions and contracts and they're avoiding that $10,000 uh, renewal. So, I mean, you're doing them a service just by providing it just as a service because they don't have access to this type of stuff typically. So and, it's, and, a, okay. it's a co-managed platform. So if they log in, they can see the upcoming renewals and stuff. Do they get alerts? Like, do they get yeah. an email reminder that, hey, by the way, in you yeah. know 30 days, this is kicking in. Do you want to keep it? Okay. Yeah, and and the alerts are all customizable. So again, when I talked about the renewal notification date being 60 days out, well, I want a customized thing that tells me 120 days out because I can't make a decision on the last day. Right. So it, it has that customizable. And the other... And, and, Mar, what you brought up is like a totally, I mean, it's an objection we know we're going to hear from people. Um, but I think partly, partially, I almost want to flip the script on that. It's like, well, what if your customers do fill it out? I, I just like, instead of focusing on the 20% that may not fill out that information, what about the 80% that will? I mean, it's the, the amount of information you're getting is just unprecedented. And it allows you to have different kind of conversations than you would ever have been able to have before. Uh, certainly with prospects and definitely with even with customers as well. well. That's that's where I was going, right? I mean, to me, everything is about positioning, right? It's, yeah, it's a different use case with dark web, but 
the MSPs had to get that level of comfort. And even in a lot of MSPs, you know, they, they, they would come to say, I don't know how to have this conversation with my customer. Right. Because just, it's, it's a lack of sales maturity. Right. Um, I, I think in a lot of cases and for us, it's for this, it's like, I mean, they're, your customer's hiring you to watch out for them, right? Your, your customer's hiring you to keep them secure, right? Keep them up to date, keep them, you know, keep their business running. So this should be a very natural extension of what you do as a core business. So sitting down at a QBR or, you know, as Matt mentioned, you know, doing webinars to prospects and saying, like, you know, first up running a business is understanding, you know, your business, understanding your expenses. We're doing our part as an MSP to keep you, you know, keep your email flowing, keep your backups going and keep your, you know, keep your business secure. The next step is we want to help you, you know, mature your business operationally. And so we can co-manage this with you, or you can use this tool for free, right? You know, whether it's a, you know, you're doing it as a webinar or you're doing it a lunch and learn, you know, you can use this for free for a year or, you know, maybe they, again, they, maybe the MSP only charges $29.99 a month and that's all they sell to that prospect. But to Matt's point, you know, the prospect bought that and you have the ability now to look into their stack and start having meaningful conversations along the way. So they may not be a prospect, you know, might, might be a customer today, but you're providing that value. They're using this tool. Then you have the ability to go in there and say, Hey, I see you guys are working with this. Right. Let's talk about how we can optimize your your business even even further. Right. So I think that's that's I think a lot of the value of this is that it's giving you the insights, giving you the data that, you know, to help you sell to those prospects and help you you know, better manage your customers. Right. And this this these are kind of the you know, very few MSPs do this today. Right. We knew we'd have an uphill battle because we're dealing with a lack of maturity for a lot of this marketplace. Right. It's like if anything, right, that's why we started with Navistack and making it free, you know, get, you know, get your house in order, figure out what, you know, what's going on in your business, right? Then start this maturity process of understanding your costs and your contracts renewals. Take that same mentality, you know, to your customers because they're probably, you know, as bad as MSPs can be managing their business and, you know, they staying on top of their stack. Customers are probably three or four times, you know, worse, right? right. So... I think I, it's all about it's all about behavior change, and that's a hard thing to do. And we realize coming into this marketplace, but at the end of the day, the success stories and the conversations that we're having with MSPs that are using this to influence, you know, or you know, influence their business practices. That's 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 the rewarding part, and that's why we're gonna we're gonna run like hell, try to evangelize this to everybody. All right, let me ask one more platform question here because I just thought about this. Uh, will the customer, if it's you know, truly a co-managed thing, will they be able to see this as kind of like a marketplace where they can see, you know, which products are not in use and they have a little contact me button there to reach out and say, hey, can you help us manage this description or lower the price or anything like that? Is that built in? We like where your head is. That's all I'll say. <laughs> we like where you're going with this. All right. Yeah. Yeah, no, look, it, it, yeah, it, our, we're, we are extremely blessed that we have a, an incredible development team. Uh, and, you know, oftentimes, especially with our advisory council and, and some of the early adopters, they're saying, hey, we'd like to see this. And we don't promise next day, but you know, we're on two week uh, sprint cycles and we're moving pretty quick. And there's some, some really cool uh, elements downstream. Uh, that, you know, much like what you're talking about. And then, you know, they, I don't want to allude to too much, but, you know, one of the other big friction points, right, is that, uh, you know, a lot of the MSPs and kind of going to that trust advisor space, they're sourcing products from Avant, Talaris, Sandler, Telesis, Pax8, you know, you know, a lot of those big groups. Uh, and managing those contracts and commissions and renewals, that, that's another just whole, whole quagmire. I mean, probably do three hour show just on that alone. Um, uh, I got but a story are, about that. There you go. Right. I mean, so that's, that, that's an, another, you know, element of friction that, you know, it's, it's it impacting the entirety of this space, right? Because you look at it from MSPs that have done exceptionally well over the last, you know, four or five years, you know, because of, you know, COVID and explosion of endpoints and, 
you know, MSPs are now maturing their businesses and they're going after enterprise, mid-market and enterprise opportunities. And now you have, as I mentioned early on, you've got all these trusted advisors that, you know, we're in this bar space that are saying, all right, this is great. We got these big hits every so often, but now we want to get into recurring revenue and you know, we want to be like the MSP. So this whole market is coming to the center, whether we like right. it or not. Right. And so that's where I think, you know, we're, we're perfectly positioned at the kind of the, the midpoint to help, you know, make this more efficient for, you know, the entire marketplace. And so there's like, you know, it's a long winded way of saying that there's some really cool things coming out. All uh, right. You know, well, and, and Marvin, I know because I know you're about to wrap up, but uh, you know Kevin didn't let me speak very much. I have one last thing I want to say. <laughs> so, and by the way, that's a tradition of me throwing Kevin under the bus in every podcast that that that's we. Nice. That's every do. show, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so look, I understand. Like, this is something new, and there's gonna there's always a, there's always skeptics. And, and what I would say to a skeptic is have a conversation with us because it's, I 100% believe it's worth it. And if you go back to the ID agent days, when we first introduced dark web monitoring to the channel, we were the first company that, that introduced it. 30% of MSPs did not get it. They said, I'll pass. I did, I did, MS, our, our small businesses are not going to care about this stuff. And so that means 30% of the industry waited two to three years to purchase dark web monitoring and to, you know, and by that point, it was commoditized. So they missed out on that two or three year run of having a differentiating product that most, you know, lots of MSPs didn't have. And I honestly believe to in my core that this is the same type of, of opportunity. And they don't come around that often to be able to completely differentiate yourself. And, you know, especially the ones who really adopt early. You know, I used to make the joke, like you could be the first dark web monitoring company in Wyoming offering this. But that's the type of thing that, MSPs could be doing right now and and the opportunity exists right now to be that massive differentiator so that was my last statement all right well you know I did mention this is this looks like a tool that could really turn the tables when it comes to client management of course it can identify you know the revenue contract all that stuff but um, everybody can find it, uh, channelprogram.com slash my IT spent. And, uh, it'll address a lot of these common challenges that we talked about today. Guys, thank you very much for, uh, hopping on the show. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Marvin. We always appreciate you and everything you do for the MSP community. All right. I'm going to, uh, I've got the page up here. I think I may, do I have to book the demo to, uh, to get in here or? We got I'm you right out call me. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. And for those of you listening or watching, thank you very much uh, for listening to the show. Go out and check uh, everything that the channel program is doing. Uh, some good stuff out in our channel. That's going to do it. And uh, we'll see you out there. And until next time, holla. <laughs>